Here, speaker, speaker, speaker. What's going on, family? Had to interrupt the episode really quick just to let you know about this free gift that I have for you. All right. If you're a speaker who's out there and you're tired of sliding in DMs, you're tired of sending cold call emails and still not getting a response, but you want to generate revenue, right? You want to explode your leads and you're trying to find a way to build your credibility. Well, go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. I have a free training just for you. Now back to the episode. Well, man, for me, we all need some help was birthed out of how I live. It was never a cute hashtag. It was never a marketing ploy. It was not something that I just dreamed up and, you know, I went and sat down with some guru and figured out a, a coinable word or catchphrase. Uh, we all need some help, if you think about it, um, has everything to do with living in community with each other. And ever since I was a little boy, I know what the power of community will do. If it's done properly and it's done healthy, I promise you there's nothing that a community can't accomplish together. And so I honestly believe that God did not create us to be independent. He didn't create us to be dependent. He didn't create us to be codependent. He created us to be interdependent. Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. Here you will learn how to start, launch, and monetize your podcast. In addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast industry. Are you ready? What's going on, family? What's going on? It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. And as you all know, or maybe you might not, right? If this is your first time listening, but this is your number one source for podcast news, podcast how-tos. But I'm really, really, really excited to add on the third pillar, which is now podcast interviews. And and now, man, I'm, I'm getting ready to bring bring a longtime friend, getting ready to bring a, a, a brother, you know, a mentor, even a coach to me in, in many respects to to the show so uh let, let me go and just give a little, little background on him let, let me get the skinny let me get the skinny right <laughs> and uh man th this gentleman's a full-time entrepreneur he's a seven-time author he's a speaker he's a coach he's mr glenn p brooks jr gotta say the whole thing go ahead welcome 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 how, how, how we doing how we doing glenn how we doing What's going on, man? Hey, good to be here. Appreciate you, Jonathan, for having me. Um, it's been a long time, man, since you and I got a chance to catch up face to face. And uh, ever since I put in a call for you, it was sort of a, a 911. I needed your help. And uh, you was right there for me, bro. So I'm privileged to be here. And uh, let's get this work. Yeah, man. Yeah, let's let's definitely let, let's definitely get into it. But now I'm, I'm going to kick it back to you, Glenn. And I, I want you just to share with people, you know, who who is Glenn P. Brooks Jr. For those who this might be their first introduction. Yeah, yeah. So, um, again, I'm Glenn P. Brooks Jr. Uh, I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I'm a coach. At the end of the day, I'm a relationship development specialist. I get a chance to do that in a couple of different categories. One, personal development to professional development. On the personal development side of things, we run a community called MAPS, the Marriages and Parenting Relationship Academy, um, to help people who are growing their uh, marital relationships, their coupled relationships heading towards marriage, and their parenting relationships, because uh, Sheree and I, we've been married 23 years in a row. And uh, I say in a row because we both were married prior to one another. Uh, I was married for 12 years once. She was married twice before me. And we've spent the last 23 years of our lives blending our family, uh, doing all the things. And then when we got into this space of writing books and doing workshops and speaking, um, it really began to open up a door where entrepreneurs were calling me and and getting in my DMs and was like, yo, how, how did you build uh, such an online platform? And clearly you're generating revenue. Uh, can you show us how? Well, that gave birth to what we call the MMC, uh, the MAPS Masterclass. It's an intensive, uh, it's actually a business builder academy where we teach and train entrepreneurs, business owners, and ministry leaders, you know, how to navigate um, with clarity, how to get out of their own way, how to pull the trigger and perfect the process later, and how to really, really make a significant impact in their community and generate revenue while they're doing it. That's good. That's good. So, man, you, you gave me two 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 ways that, that that we could go. But let's just start with 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 maps first. Why why is maps okay. so essential um, j just to just to the culture? I'm, I'm going to say talk talk to me, Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Jonathan, I think that when you look at the statistics and we know that marriages the first time around are ending right around 50 percent um, of marriages are ending in divorce. The second time around, it's more like in the mid 60 percentile. Mm -hmm. And then the third time around, it is scaling up past 70 percent and closer to 80 percent. What that really means is, is that people are not getting it right the first time. And they're continuing to do it over and over again, and they're still getting it wrong. Sheree and I fall into that category, man. And when we figured out how to get it right, uh, a light bulb came on inside of both of our heads. And we said, we got to help as many people as possible not go down the road of divorce unnecessarily. I get it. There are times where it just falls apart, but I am willing to bet most people quit long before the thing is over. And as a result of no information, they don't have any tools. They have no community support, none whatsoever. All they have is auntie and them who they ain't even successful in their relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not going well. And, uh, and they don't have the tools that needs to be um, you know, used in order to win. So that became our heart's desire 23 years ago as we were figuring it out. And uh, we started writing books and and uh, and our education that we've gotten along the way is really serving to help people out in a significant way. Why, why is marriage so hard? <laughs> Probably because you have two individual people trying to come together and mesh, mesh a life that uh, organically isn't going to grow together. It has to be pruned. Um, if you think about a garden and if you think about trees, they all grow together, but they don't grow in harmony unless there is someone taking care of that garden. And I'm gonna let that breathe. The challenge with most marriages is that there's no one on point taking care of the marriage. Marriage works when you do the work. And most people don't know or have the skill set of communication. Most people don't do conflict well. Most people don't know what their temperaments and their personalities are. And so where they believe that opposites attract, opposites will also have you on the front page of the news somewhere because y'all can't get along and you're button heads. So the reason why marriage doesn't work so often, I think quite frankly, Jonathan, is because uh, people have thrown caution to the wind and they've decided to wing it. And I think that like anything else that you want to perfect, you have to be skilled at it. Um, doing podcasts, there's one thing to jump on a mic. It's another thing to generate revenue doing it. Those are two different things. And you have to be skilled at it. And I think that unfortunately, no one really wants to be told uh, how they need to proceed. And I'm of the opinion that no one man knows it all. We all need some help. And the truth of the matter is, the quicker you can get it, the more likely your marriage, I believe, will not only uh, uh, grow, but it'll thrive. And and I believe that with all my Yeah. So, OK, so you, you kind of just gave, gave me a oop, Glenn, because you, you just threw out the we, we all need some help. And and, and I've, I've seen you take the take the phrase or, or take the the just the name. We all need some help. And you just took it and you grew a community out of it. Glenn, just 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 talk a little bit about that, because I mean, I've, I've watched how, you know, you've consistently just been a presence on, on Clubhouse and just across, you know, the online sector. So talk yeah. a little bit more about we, we all need some help. Well, man, for me, we all need some help was birthed out of how I live. It was never a cute hashtag. It was never a marketing ploy. It was not something that I just dreamed up. And, you know, I went and sat down with some guru and figured out a, a coinable word or catchphrase. Uh, we all need some help, if you think about it, um, has everything to do with living in community with each other. And ever since I was a little boy, I know what the power of community will do. If it's done properly and it's done healthy, I promise you there's nothing that a community can't accomplish together. And so I honestly believe that God did not create us to be independent. He didn't create us to be dependent. He didn't create us to be codependent. He created us to be interdependent. That's why when scripture talks about uh, iron sharpening iron, so does accountants of the scripture talks about things like, you know, every joint supplies, like we're in this together. And when we figure out what it looks like to do community right, ah, man. Like, it's a problem. Like, you're going to accomplish just about anything you want to. The, the children of Israel, when they built the Tower of Babel, and I mean, you can talk about, I could talk about that forever in terms of what unity done, done right looks like. And, uh, and I think that that is absolutely essential 
uh, when it comes to growing relationships. So hashtag, we came up with it. We, all we did was made it a hashtag. And so it's, we all need some help. It's all together. And I promise you, if you Google it, I'm probably the first 15 entries or whatever it is you're going to find, um, especially if you do it on fa Facebook or, or Instagram, because we're constantly using that to galvanize people. What's going on, family? Sorry to interrupt the episode, but it's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. And I just want to let you know if you're a speaker, you're a coach, or you're a consultant, and you're trying to accelerate your credibility, right? You're trying to get in a spot to where you can get in front of more eyes and you want to take that voice of yours and turn it into a profitable business. I'm holding a free training just for you. Okay. So go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com so that you can explode your leads and accelerate your credibility right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you, you talked about, you talked about community, you talked about coming together, you talked about unity. Glenn, I, I feel like th I feel like I just need to ask you this question just just because right just because why is it in our culture right with people who look like us black and brown wh why why is it that so often we're more fo it, it seems it seems right we're more so focused on the singular individual elevating versus the unit elevating to together like we can't it seems like we struggle to find unity as a whole. Mm -hmm. Help me out, Glenn. Yeah, it's funny. We just had a conversation like that on Clubhouse as we're recording this podcast. Um, it was this past week. Um, and I interviewed a young lady um, who is from Haiti. Um, her father owns a hospital in Haiti. And it's a nonprofit, uh, non uh, nonprofit hospital where they're basically just offering health care at whatever people can afford. And uh, we talked about communal living and we talked about the idea of what does caregiving look like abroad. And I think that, unfortunately, what has happened is, is that culturally uh, we have been uh, led to believe that community or the idea of us working together is not a benefit to us. And so the truth of the matter is, is that if you look and you trace the history of black and brown people, we've always come from villages and we've always come from community tribes, uh, factions of people who've come together to work things out. Have they always gotten along? No. Have they always done things perfectly? No. But they understand that the greater good of the whole is better than the one. And so for me, if I can help people, whether it is in their relationships, um, I'll give you a quick example. You know, we grew up in the culture that says what goes on in this house stays where, Jonathan, finish that statement. In this house. You would think you and I grew up in the same house, but we didn't. But that is culturally understood and unfortunately accepted. And what that does is it serves to keep people isolated. And here's what I do believe. I don't believe that silos were ever designed to grow anything gardens were. And so what people do, our community and others, is that we tend to isolate. We tend to grow alone. We tend to be to ourselves. And as a result, we lose consistently. And I think that if we can figure out a way, man, to be able to come outside of that silo where the light is, plant ourselves in a garden where there is care, love, and protection, uh, I believe that you'll see an exponential growth in your relationship, your business. Uh, you talk about tribe building and business and that sort of stuff. Apple is not a $3 trillion business because they have no tribe. Are you kidding me? They have an unbelievable fan base that will run through a brick wall and pay the most for something that may or may not even be worth it. But why do they do that? Because they have a tribal mindset. Hey, I am of the iOS nation team Apple all day long. And that's what we do. Does that make sense? That does make sense. As, as you were just saying that, I just started to think about how many conversations I've been on one side or the other of people fighting for Who's the best? Is it Apple? Is it Android? And neither of these parties are paid. Neither. <laughs> but people Bro. are just, hey, you gonna you, you're gonna hear my side, and Bro. my side is gonna. And be that's right. funny to me, man. You think about that in the sports world. My son is funny. Um, uh, you know, he 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 finds it interesting that I don't give up any energy to argue about my favorite football team, and the reason is is because I'm not on a payroll. I love them. Would root for them. Go to games, we'll spend money. Good, bad, or indifferent. I'll ride for them, but I am not a fanatic to the point to where it's costing me everything and costing them nothing. Are you kidding me? Why would I do that? I'm going to take that same energy and put that in my family and in my business, 
and building what it is that I'm supposed to be doing while I get a chance to lease a little time on this planet before I get up out of here. There it is. Just minding my Bro. own black business. Just minding my <laughs> own black business. <laughs> Okay, so man, Glenn, Glenn, man, so the you know the people out there might, might not know, man, with, with with you with this smooth voice, with with you with you with this quiet storm voice, Glenn, take 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 us take us back to the Glenn before you you're doing all because you know now you're full time entrepreneur now now you've written seven books we 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 just got to go back I I just want to give the people some context, Glenn, because your 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 voice your voice man. You're too smooth, man. You're too smooth. So I, I grew up in South Baltimore, a uh, single parent home. My parents got divorced when I was seven. Um, it was rough. My sister and I um, didn't have a lot. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was just having a conversation recently that I did not, you know, Jordans came out on my watch. I graduated in 1984. I saw Air Force Ones hit the market. I saw the starter jackets. I didn't own any of that stuff until I was a full grown adult making my own money. Um, but uh, yeah, we grew up tough, um, but we grew up loved. Uh, my mother was always a wordsmith. Um, she would not allow us to speak uh, slang. Wouldn't allow us to do it. We were the only kids in South Baltimore that that had a handle or a grasp on the King's English. And when I say the only one, it, it it may not have been the only one, but I can tell you this: we would get in trouble, and we would get corrected and reprimanded if we pronounced words wrong, if we didn't know what they meant, if we didn't know how to spell them, and the whole nine yards. So, we're growing up, kids would call me the professor, and I, I promise you, I wasn't any smarter than anybody else. I just knew how to talk and I knew how to connect. And uh, that served me well throughout my life. Um, it, as a result of that, when I went into the military right out of high school, uh, you know, quickly rose in rank and all that sort of stuff. And then when I got out of the military, I went into to the radio industry and then I learned how to uh, skill up what it was I was already naturally good at. And uh, and that's probably that and a good microphone is probably what you hear, what you hear today. Well, I mean, I think the microphone's all right, but I think the I think I think the voice blesses the microphone to make the microphone look better. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to argue that. I'm not going to. Yeah, it's, it's it's all good, man. It's it's all good. So, so Glenn, just just like through the work that you've done, because we 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 talked about maps. Now 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 let's now let's parallel over and let let's talk a little bit about about the MMC. Why did you say that now it's time for for you to take this route with with the MMC? just with the work that you're doing. Yeah, I, it was funny because I was reluctant to take that jump. And it was actually our business coach at a time that coached me up and said, listen, it's time for you to take what you're doing to the next level. And the reason why is because the marketplace is demanding it. I Listen, let me say this, y'all. For those of you guys who are listening, I get to work with new entrepreneurs, business owners, and ministry leaders. I, I, I did a, a long stint in full-time ministry. Um, and one of the things that I find is that we are super creative, but as a result of that, we're also super distracted. And what we'll do is we'll start mm. a bunch of things. We'll finish nothing. We have this uh, propensity of jumping out of perfectly good flying aircrafts without a working parachute, and we'll build it as we fly, right? Right. The problem with that is is sustainability. <laughs> if you think about that long enough, you, you know, say that's not really sustainable. So what I learned was is that, um, and I got this principle from Gary Keller's book, The One Thing. What is the one thing such by doing that it makes everything either easier or unnecessary? Well, for a high eye on the disc assessment, we call it the flamingo. I have never been able to focus all my life. I probably should have been the poster child of ADHD and the whole bit. Uh, but that showed me a principle that if I would lean into something and master it, it would give birth to other things as opposed to me just starting that. And that's what happened to the MMC. I, I leaned in and I did my one thing. I'm a relationship development specialist. I'm not a coach. I'm not a speaker. I'm not a, uh, a an author. Uh, those are methods that I use to deploy my one thing. Every room I walk into, I am always interested in the care or the state the state of your relationship. 
whether that's personal or professional, my conversation is always going to gravitate. So how's the fam? What's going on? How can I help? How's the business? How are you doing with your colleagues? How are you doing with your boss's relationship? That's how I think. I've been that way since I was a little boy. So for me, when we built MAPS and it really jumped off, and once we crossed the five-figure a month threshold, and that revenue was coming no matter what we did, and we would just show up for a few hours a week in a group coaching environment, I thought to myself, wow, I think this is a thing. And that's when people started asking me, yo, can you show me how you did that? Which gave birth to what we call uh, the MAPS Masterclass Business Builder Academy, where we teach and train entrepreneurs the basics on how to get out of their own way, how to get laser focused, and how to take something that's in their head, produce it, and actually bring it to the marketplace so that it can make impact or generate revenue or both. That's so powerful. That's 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 so powerful, Glenn. That's so powerful, especially with, you know, just like what you're saying, you know, starting out entrepreneurs, um, just being in a spot to where they have ideas. I have an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea. But an idea without the application and the execution is just a great idea. So that's it. It's just hype. At, at, at the end of the day, at, at its best, it's hype. It'll serve to hype you up, get you excited. And if for my spiritual people, this is where we get to putting stuff on God. God <laughs> showed me. God told me. God said, if I, and bro, we forgot that there is a work component to that idea. And if it goes undone, so will the idea. Faith that that works. Faith that that works all day, every day. Yes, sir. Glenn, you said you, said you work with ministry leaders also. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I spent uh, a number of years in the ministry uh, field. I was a youth pastor for a number of years, uh, became an associate pastor, campus pastor. Uh, my last stint in Atlanta with a church that we I've been a part of four different church plants. So I get what it looks like to grow up in that ministry space, to lead in that ministry space, and also to leave it and do something else but also still stay true to the calling that's on your heart and on your life. And so I've been able to do that. And that's why I love, love working with ministry leaders. How, how does one transition? And, and, and Glenn, I, I know, you know, cause I know you've been in this space, but how does one transition from being ministry? I don't want to, well, I'm, I'll just say it like that ministry minded to then coming over in this other space into where it's like now, you know, from ministry to marketplace, somebody has to, Somebody has to pay for stuff to keep going. Like, how does how does one make that make that transition? Yeah, it starts with your mindset, Jonathan. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I I will tell you if you transition from ministry to marketplace, but your mindset don't do, doesn't, you won't succeed. Your mind has to do a shift on some level, and I get to coach people on how to rethink, how to reposition, how to shift your own paradigm. Um, there is a construct that works in the ministry space because it's ministry. That construct doesn't work necessarily in the marketplace because it's the marketplace. And so we learned a long time ago, guys, look, commerce, the exchange of goods and services um, is, is, is what doing business is all about. Um, in the ministry world, um, it, we, we grow up thinking you know, freely have we received, and so freely we should give. And that's an absolute true spiritual principle. But when you're talking about a business principle, this is where the Word of God also talks about that a workman is worthy of his hire. So what I get to do is I get to teach and train people how to reconcile the two. So for instance, you've got a ministry idea where you want to give back to your community. What I can teach you how to do is create a business model that may not have anything to do with that particular ministry that generates revenue so that it will fund the ministry. And so you get to do both. You generally just don't get to do both equally at the same time and become wildly successful. So that's the part where the paradigm has to shift. For me, I had to stop the ministry component for a season, build a business that generated revenue, and now say the MAPS Relationship Academy, which still is a paid community, but what we do there is more ministry-minded, focused content delivery, the whole bit, than anything else. And because of the transformation, people don't even look at the transaction. And I think that unfortunately, most people 
are so focused on the transaction versus the transformation. And I think you need both. Glenn, that's so good. I just saw, I just saw transformation over transaction in my mind, as you were saying that, and that, that's that, man, that, that's good. Man, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah JJ, I, I, man, I, I think that that's a, that's a, it's a unique uh, perspective because, you know, a lot of people in ministry, you know, will scoff at the business person unless they're paying their tithes. Um, pastors, I'm talking to you. Or we will, if we're in men, if we're in the marketplace and we're all about the dollar, dollar, dollar bill, now we can't give anything away. We can't be a blessing to anybody. We can't do anything for free. And I teach people how to monetize free. Mm. It may not cost you, but somebody's going to pay for this. I promise you. And if you think about how nonprofits work, that's exactly how they work. It doesn't cost the end user, but someone's paying for it. Ask United Way. Ask AARP. Mm. Ask, I mean, I could keep going on and ask, you know, the Boys and Girls Club. Ask these different, their, their business model is to draw the revenue. We call it underwriting. We call it sponsorship. We call it a myriad of things, but they generate revenue so that they can be good, do do good rather, in 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 in, in their environments. Man, yeah, there, there it is, there it is. So as, as we talk about, you know, just just giving back in ministry and marketplace, Glenn, that there's a there's another way that you're giving back. You know, there, there there's another way of giving back, and you, you know, not long ago, start decided to decide to start up a podcast. So I, I want you. I want you to just share, share with the people, Glenn, why why you decided to start the podcast, and also what, what's what's the name of your podcast for the people. So the name of our podcast, ironically enough, is we all need some help Wednesday. The podcast we keep it real simple, and the reason why we do it is because of where we record it. So every Wednesday we record this podcast live on Clubhouse. And um, I was challenged by the guy that curates the music experience in our room on Clubhouse. He's a DJ in real life. He runs live sound for people both in uh, live in person as well as, you know, hybrid events online. A techie all day long, all the gadgets I got, I promise you, he pushed me to buy. (laughs) Because the truth of the matter is, is that he saw an opportunity. He said, Coach, listen, we're here every day, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern. We're here for 90 minutes a day. What would it look like if we captured some of this stuff and created a podcast out uh, somewhere and placed it somewhere just so that people who normally may not even come to Clubhouse, they could get access to some of the things that we're talking about because we're really, really, really helping people. And if I gave you a way to do that that cost you no other time other than what you're doing, would you say yes? I said 100%. See, because I'm not... I'm not against repurposing by no stretch, but what I am against is walking or walking outside of my one thing. If it is, listen, if it is not the one thing such by doing that, it makes everything easier or unnecessary, your boy ain't going to do it. I can promise you that. And that's how I've become so focused. So he comes around, he's a who, not a how. He's the who that kind of does all the work to it. We're there anyway. And uh, we recorded about 13 episodes and then we launched it live. And so now for the last six months, we have been curating experience and we probably got, I don't know, five, six, eight, 12 uh, episodes in a can at any given time. And, uh, And we're recording it every week because we're already showing up. So we just put some technology to it. And we're able to now put that out in the marketplace in such a way that it really is able to bless a lot of people. Yeah, man, that, that's, that's amazing. You know, just, just, yeah, just being I, able to, you know, I, curate that. I, I, gotta add, I, I, I gotta add this part, Jonathan Jones. Uh, we couldn't have done that without you, my friend. Cause as soon as he came to me with that idea, I said, time out, slow down, slow your roll. If we're going to do this, we need to know what we don't know. And I know a cat who's killing the game when it comes to podcasts. Uh, We need to call him and we need to jump on a Zoom call and we need to figure out what we don't know. And that's what I'm talking about, about being coached up. You were able to coach up my team and uh, give us some things. And I promise you, we just ran the play. Point blank, end of the story. And, 
You know, I, I don't know all the numbers on the podcast, how many downloads and all that sort of stuff. And right now it's not as important for me to monetize it yet because the way I'm going to monetize this podcast is not necessarily about numbers. It's about content. So recently we've had a person, a big company who's come to us about the work we're doing on Clubhouse. And they said, I like that content. Can I, would you, would you be interested in me sponsoring the room, sponsoring the club? I said, would I be interested? Of course I would be. You got to understand also this person had booked me to come speak at their corporation mm -hmm. uh, probably three or four months prior. Wow. And I said, you know what? That would make sense because I knew I checked all the boxes that they were looking for. I really wouldn't have to do anything different other than what I am doing and just, you know, drop a tagline brought to you by. Well, if that is now not only a live clubhouse, but they can also sponsor the podcast. They can also sponsor the various features, the live events that we do, Bootstrapping Your Way to Success, which is a, a derivative of what we do on Clubhouse, but it's in the live space. Now one client or one or two people can underwrite total dollars, something that pays for a lot of stuff, and we can keep doing what we do. Does that make sense? That, may, that makes perfect sense. And that that's a... That's a perfect match made in heaven because, you know, knowing for one, you check all the boxes because knowing that the information and the content that you're sharing is helping people and going to continue to help the people that are reaching out to, you know, partner and sponsor in that way. That's what a perfect sponsorship would look like, you know. So, you know, kudos on that, man. That, that, that's a, that's amazing. And, you know, that's a true blessing. And you just even just showed and I believe you're a testament to the fact of, because you just said you don't know what the numbers are doing right now. And I just want to take a slight moment and just, just get a slight vent off, Glenn, just a slight vent. Too often people are so worried about, you know, the numbers and worried about the flash and worried about this and worried about that. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's ne honestly, for the most part, it's not about the numbers. It's literally about the transformation and about the impact and being consistent. If, if you can't do those three things, if you can't provide a transformation, you can't provide an impact and you can't show up consistently, nobody is going to want to do any kind of business with you anyway. Boy, let me say this. I don't know if this is going to come through, but I, 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 I got to let them know. I got I to let them know. You understand what I'm saying? Jonathan, listen, as they would say, say it again for all the people that snuck in the back door. Bro. <laughs> And I think that unfortunately, and I get to teach and train entrepreneurs around this mindset all the time, people are caught up looking at the numbers. And you got to remember, let's take this back. I worked in radio advertising. I sold radio advertising for a living. I know what it's like to go into a retail store who's selling jeans. And all they're trying to do is get traffic into that store. Well, if my competitor comes in and talks about, well, we're the number one radio station in town and... We have 600,000 more listeners than they do and da, da 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 This is what the maybe the proprietor is saying to me, right? And I got one question for you. My question is, if all 600,000 of those people walked in this door right now, would you have the inventory to even sell it to them? Mm. Could you even get them in your door? So my question is, why would you pay a premium on what's not gonna walk through your door. And even if they do, you can't service them. Why wouldn't you think about the audience that you serve? Let's talk about your brand. Let's talk about what you're selling. And let's talk about what radio station or what outlet best matches that. And let me tell you, and then that's when I would go on my spiel and say, I, cause I've done my homework. I already know that our listeners wear your stuff. And even if both of those radios or competitors do, I'm going to give it to you at a slightly cheaper price point because I'm not the big dog. And that's how I would get people to sign up for stuff. So I, that same concept works in social media. I can tell you there's not one social media platform. I'm going to say this really loudly because y'all are going to trip out when you hear this. There's not one social media platform that I have. I don't care if it's Instagram, Clubhouse, uh, 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 IG, I, I mean, uh, Facebook, you name, whatever, YouTube, it, it doesn't matter because I'm on all of them. Not any of them have more than 10,000 followers on any platform whatsoever. And for the last six and a half years, we've been building our business. We've not spent $1 on paid advertising either. Ooh. And we run a multi-million dollar uh, 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 operation over here.
Ooh. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even playing with you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A uh, 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 a multi six figure operation. Let me correct that. We've been past the six figure long time ago. Past that whole everybody's looking for the six figure. Listen, we're in the multi. We could go to seven and eight figures in a heartbeat. But the truth of the matter is, it's going to cause me to devote to, to come up off of the page that I'm on and do fifteen things that I don't do, and I'm not doing that. And until it comes to me, it's not for me. And I'm good in this space because we're doing okay. We're doing plenty okay. So I, I need people to understand, please, y'all, it's not about the numbers. Think about the content. Think about the people you're servicing. Think about what value you're giving to them. Think about when they walk away, how do they feel about doing business with you? And the truth of the matter is they will become your uh, ambassadors and they will tell your story long before anybody else do. And I promise you it'll be more impactful than an ad. Promise you. Oh, talk your Sorry, talk, man. I didn't mean talk your I talk, didn't man. Mean talk your didn't talk. <laughs> oh, like the old pastor used to say, hello, lights and walls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow, man. That, 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 I believe that stuff with all my heart, brother. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, me, me and you are still connected after ye man, I don't know how many years it's been. I just know me, me and you were a part of the same community. Shout out to Kendall Ficklin, you know, and yeah, yeah. shout out to Grand Nation. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Everything adds great. When I look at what you're doing, man, I'm so proud of you. You know, I remember when you decided before you got married and said, you know what, I'm gonna come up from Dallas and I'm gonna slide up to this conference in Atlanta. Because, and I will never forget you saying this, bro, I'm only going to do this one time. So I need to know what I don't know before I need to know it so that I don't have to go back and repeat what it is I don't know. I can't say that again. <laughs> but that's how, that's how you move. And I said, this is impressive. This dude walking in the door, 615, you know what I'm saying? 618, whatever it is. And I said, he kind of, he trying to get this one. I said, I, look, I don't even know if, if, if she was on your mind then, but I said, whoever this brother marries is getting a good one. Uh, is getting a good one because you are doing the work before you had to do the work. And that's what this looks like. This is the kind of transformation life. I, and I'm, I'm forever connected to you as a result of the, those kinds of uh, interactions for sure. Man. I, I appreciate it, Glenn. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. As as I have about about three of your books on the bookshelf down there. So, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and now, you know, I'll tell you now what. We're two years, two two years, two years and two months. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. Oh, I love man. it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, good for you, man. Congratulations. Yeah, learning a lot. Learning a lot. A lot. That's the name of the game. That's the name of the game, JJ. We never stop learning, man. I'm 23 years in this time around, and I promise you every single day is an adventure. But when you become a student of those that you serve, including your spouse, it becomes a little bit easier because you're showing up to learn. You know what I mean? When you're a student, you're, you're showing up the expectation you're going to learn something. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if people approach their relationships that way, they would look a lot different. That's good, man. That's that, that's good. That's good, Glenn. We about to about, about to slide to this, this this last segment. I'm about to let you about to let you ski daddle here in just a moment. But uh, I like like to have a little bit of fun on the show. We do uh, do a little bit of rapid fire, and this is the this or that segment where I'm gonna ask you, you know, a couple of rapid fire questions, and you're gonna choose one or the other. So are you are you ready? Let's get it. I'm ready. Let's go. All right. Here we go. Meat or vegetables. Meat. International vacation or a new TV? International vacation. <laughs> City or countryside? City. Sweater or hoodie? Hoodie. Book or ebook? Ebook. Audiobook or podcast? Audio book or podcast? I would have to say audio book. Okay, okay, there it is. And then last, last yeah. question. This is a little bonus question. Who's one slept on podcaster or one podcast that that you feel should be the next guest on 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 this show? Or or 
that yes, should be yes, interviewed on your show? Podcaster. Ah, yes. There is a young lady. I don't know her last name. Her first name is Altavis. And I don't know if you know her, but I met her on Clubhouse. She is a monster at what she does. And I'm such a fan. And I don't know how much shine she's getting, but you should go interview her. Now, there's a ton of other people. She was the person that jumped in my head. Okay. But there's a bunch of other people who don't do podcasts that I believe you should have for sure. Starting with the panel, the people that hang out with me every day on okay. Clubhouse. Every one of them are an amazing interview. They all are very uniquely gifted and talented. And uh, I would absolutely, I think they would make a lot of sense for you to have them and host them on your show. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. I'm about to do this brief commercial and I'm going to kick it to you for the, for the final yes, word, Glenn. So, um, so everybody out there, you know, if you're a speaker, you're a coach or you're a consultant, I would encourage you right now, if you're looking to explode your leads, you're looking to ultimately explode and increase your visibility, you need to go with, to get paid with podcasting.com and you can sign up for our free training. Like I said, if you're a speaker, coach or consultant, you're looking to increase your visibility, you're looking to generate more leads and even turn your voice into a profitable business, go to get paid with podcasting.com. Now to Glenn P. Brooks Jr. for the final word. Listen, I say this every time I close out anything. I honestly believe that you can't get to any place of significance by yourself, folks. Why? Because we all need some help. Y'all have a great day and hopefully we'll talk soon. There it is. There it is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Glenn, for, for stopping by and, and gracing the show. Appreciate you and, and everything that you're doing, you know, and so many people you're helping, man. So thank you for taking time and, you know, adding value to the show today. Thanks for having me, bro. Appreciate you. Most definitely. Everybody out there, I, I'm going to encourage you all to go ahead and click all the links down below. I'm going to have all the links for Glenn so you can contact him, so you can check out uh, his podcast, and even so you can find out more information. So we're going to have that down below in the show notes. Remember, this is the Your Podcast Mentor Show, where we're here to help you establish your platform so that you can profit on purpose from your podcast. Until next time, peace and God bless.